our last page of unit one, page four, so our writing section. So the first one asks us to explain the conditions for a number to be irrational and give a numerical example of an irrational number and explain why your example is irrational. Okay, so you kind of be explaining twice. So if you explain the conditions of an irrational number, I mean, you, you're already explaining why it's irrational, right? So you don't have to really do that twice. So conditions of an irrational number, remember the irrational numbers, the decimal does not terminate. Nor repeat. Okay, so for a rational number, the decimal does not terminate or repeat. In the numerical example, so you can just come up with any number as long as it's random, it doesn't terminate, and it doesn't ha have a pattern. So I'm going to say five points. Again, any random set of numbers would do here. Okay, so 5.1346721592, and you can keep going on and on, but again, notice how there's no definitive pattern in any of these repeating decimal numbers, and they do not terminate, right? So this is going to be going on forever and ever. Okay, so that is the definition of a rational number, right? So this decimal doesn't terminate, and it doesn't repeat. Everything's random. Okay, and the last problem we have on our study guide here, explain why i squared equals negative 1. You will want to use the definition of i in your solution. So we know we got to use the definition of i in our solution. We know that i equals the square root of negative 1. Okay, now i squared Right, I squared can be written as I times I. Right, so we can substitute square root of negative one times the square root of negative one because we know that I is equivalent to negative one. Okay, now this here we have two of them times itself, right? Just how x times x equals x squared, square root of negative one times the square root of negative one is the square root of negative 1 squared. Right, we have two of those there. Now the rule for square roots and squares is that they cancel each other out. So this square, that square root and this square cancel each other each other out, and all we're left with is negative 1. And that's your explanation for why i squared equals negative 1. Okay, and we did use the definition of i in our solution, right? Because we know i equals square root of negative 1. Again, i squared is equal to i times i. And then this is where we substituted the square root of negative 1 in because we know i equals the square root of negative 1. Okay, and then negative 1 squared. And final answer is simplified out, i squared equals negative 1. So that's your study guide. I hope you guys found this useful and I wish you the best of luck on your exams.